What's up guys, it's Friday, December 30th, and this is Newswave. So remember how we had a quick talk the other day about Pokemon Prism and how that was essentially cease and desisted by Nintendo, where they sent them a letter and said, stop working on this or we will sue you. And Adam, or Cool Boy Man, as he's known on the forums, actually had to take those down, get rid of all the download links, and basically put a big like apology out to fans who were following, because it took eight years, so he accrued a lot of people following the project, just said, you know, I'm sorry, well... These people, the fans in general, kind of took matters in their own hands. So they, they got the files for the game, and they have now released it and spread it all over the internet. If you want to play Pokemon Prism, there's not much stopping you. You can go download it. It's all over the internet. You just type it into Google, you'll find it. I don't want to post any links or even tell you really where to get it, just in case, because uh, it is technically a ROM file. I don't know how that works on YouTube. So keep in mind if you want to find it it's out there you can find it so now of course fans all over the subreddit are doing things like talking about it trading secrets even trying to write a walkthrough for it currently so this goes to show nintendo if they had just let it go it probably would have been much less i don't want to say popular but it wouldn't be as uh scrutinized and looked at now like it is because at this point nintendo tried to stop something and it shows that as much as you want to try to obviously keep these kind of things down the internet fans they will find a way to get it out there to the public and then you know turn it into a bigger thing than it would have been if nintendo just let this go it would have been a rom that came out people would have played it and that would have been the end of it but now people are kind of you know taking this onto their uh, as their own like rebellion kind of thing you know where they're they're playing the game even though they're not supposed to and of course it's very popular news sites are reporting on it and uh everyone's downloading it so kojima productions put out a new mascot for their their company essentially and you can actually buy a half scale replica of this mascot so check this thing out i, I don't want to say the name wrong but i probably will so i'm sorry uh it looks here like ludens and it's a spacefaring mascot of the new kojima productions and you can actually buy it the statue though costs about two thousand dollars it says 1999 i don't know why the penny is such a big deal just say 2000 flat i guess again that kind of plays in the psychological anyway it's two thousand dollars essentially and it's like a high-end collectible and it looks awesome this thing is big too it's not little it actually stands about 63 inches tall it has a uh, base and flagpole carrying and everything for the for the flag it has kojima productions on the flag it's kind of cool and it has led lighting in his helmet it's pretty awesome it's only gonna be limited to 150 units so it will be kind of limited here and there uh getting it will definitely be a big collector's piece if you're a kojima fan just make sure you have $2,000, I guess, to blow on this. That seems actually pretty expensive. But if you're a collector, uh, it says it'll ship somewhere between January and March of 2018. So it will take a while. If you want to put a pre-order in for it or contact somebody to get it, you're going to be waiting a while. But it, the detail here, the detail makes sense. It looks like it's it's a very high quality piece for your collection. Now, if you still want like a, like a replica of them, it looks like Kojima Productions is going to partner with Good Smile and you'll be able to get smaller, more affordable replicas that you can kind of put to your collection. Good Smile is basically making like a Nendoroid version of it. If you're not familiar with the Nendoroid series, they're pretty cool. They're like little figures that are I don't higher detail I'd say or higher quality looking guys that pretty cool they're like little chibi usually usually like little chibi figures and their boxers are numbered it looks really neat they pretty much do everything from anime to video game characters it's it, they're pretty cool to collect and they're going to do one for this Kojima Productions mascot uh, that one if if I recall correctly Nendoroids usually retail anywhere from like forty to sixty dollars it would probably I would assume fall somewhere in there it might be the sixty dollar end though if it does light up. But it's kind of neat. If you're a collector of Kojima figures or Kojima production stuff, I would check it out. Could be neat for you. And if you're waiting for a Super Mario Run to show up on Android, it's coming. It is. It's actually already technically there. There's a placeholder in the marketplace. You can go look it up now. And it actually has a spot where you can get an alert for it being available. Sent, I assume, a push notification set to your phone. And it has things like description of the game and to basically functions of it and everything. Like a whole, a whole description of the game. So everything's there except for the download button at this point, which tells me that it is very close to being done for Android. They probably just have to port it to it, iron out a few details, and then it'll be ready to go, which could help boost Super Mario Run sales. Obviously, the Android marketplace at this point is larger than the iPhone, iPad marketplace right now. So I could see Super Mario Run getting another big boost from that, maybe even help them with their sales. I know their conversion rate's been kind of low. That is more along the lines of the mobile mobile market kind of being a little more free to play with microtransactions unfortunately because a lot of people see that it's ten dollars and not free but they don't realize that microtransactions add up very quickly these are the same kind of people who spend 
100 200 dollars on a microtransaction game without realizing it in a month or two so if you really consider that super mario run is actually a bargain for ten dollars it, it, it's a pretty long game it's got it's pretty much got average to good reviews probably better than most mobile games that come out that again are like base builders and stuff so honestly ten dollars isn't bad i will probably get it on my android phone when it does come out hopefully it's soon i would hope that it would release in january but we'll see so here's another fun little Nintendo rumor that is going on right now. It's actually on the Reddit. I saw it pop up there. It makes sense to me because I used to work at GameStop, so I kind of know how these things are kind of working behind the scenes. What's happening is there's a rumor going around by Go Nintendo that GameStops are allegedly going to receive marketing materials for the Switch and for Zelda. And that's going to be happening next week is what's being said, which makes sense. You get it a week before... When we would get stuff like that at GameStop, we would be basically be told not to say anything about what we're seeing. We would even have, like, so when Halo 3 came out and I was there, we had to actually cover the games and the boxes with a tarp, and we weren't allowed to tell anybody that Halo 3 was there. This was about four or five days before Halo 3 came out. So it makes sense to me that they're getting this marketing material a week prior, because based on the plans here that they're they're saying is happening, they're going to have like a whole section for the Switch. It's going to basically move the Wii U and the 3DS games kind of t to the side, essentially, and build this entire, you know, monstrous Switch uh, department, basically, for, you know, doing things like pre-orders, advertising games coming out with their box art, where they slide them in a bunch of DVD cases and put them around. And it makes sense. I... I Definitely see that system becoming a, a pre-order item after the after the meeting happens, especially that, Zelda, any other games that are, trust me, any games that get announced are going to be able to be pre-ordered. You'll be able to go in there, pre-order the Switch, pre-order Zelda, pre-order whatever the games we see. So, uh, this makes sense. It looks like GameStop is pretty much getting ready for the Switch. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see all this marketing stuff pop up overnight. So, January 12th to 13th, it happens, the meeting does. The 13th to the 14th, you walk into GameStop, all the Switch stuff is up. And Amazon actually posted their sales figures, essentially. Not their actual figures, but they ranked the different games that sold the best during the holiday season. We've now gotten to the end of the holiday season, essentially. So they basically posted what ranked where. And the top three, basically, is pretty funny. It was Final Fantasy 15, makes sense. Pokemon, Pokemon. Pokemon Sun, Pokemon Moon. That's it. Those are the top three. And that tells me that Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon are very, very strong this holiday season. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone. I do think it's a little surprising that Final Fantasy XV gained as much traction as it did, considering it had this weird uh, this weird mix-up, I guess, from fans as to who liked what. It was definitely not a typical Final Fantasy game. And in Japan, it kind of showed. It looked like a lot of the, the Japanese gamers weren't as big of a fan of it as the Western gamers were. And in particular, they're pointing out that it is the PS4 copy that really pushed Final Fantasy XV over the edge. Again, I don't think that's surprising the way Xbox is marketed and the way PlayStation's marketed. I think it makes more sense that Final Fantasy, an RPG, would do better on the PS4. Also... PS, the PlayStation franchise, the franchise logo and everything, does seem to get more of the Final Fantasy games, so of course the gamers for that system were expecting it. Also, there's an update, a big update coming out for Windows 10 soon, and what's going to happen is there, one of the parts is basically a gaming mode that is going to give you the ability to run games better by reducing resources that are running while your game is running. And this is kind of to spearhead the entire, like, Xbox and Windows environment kind of coming together, and it's kind of having gamers question what the point of the Xbox is going to be, what, what's the point in the future for it? Because it looks more and more like the Xbox is becoming a PC. Scorpio is going to be as close to a PC as we can, as we've seen based on what the rumors are and the specs that are leaking with AMD being a part of it using their newer, the newer Vega and Zen chip or Ryzen chip at this point. And it, it kind of begs the question as to, will the Xbox actually be necessary in the future if this game mode really helps the computer actually run better, so you have lower end computers, not not completely, obviously completely low, not like integrated graphics low, but games with mid range to lower range video cards all of a sudden can run games five to 10 frames better and it becomes playable. You know, maybe it goes from 20 frames to 30 frames, all of a sudden it's playable like an Xbox is, you just get a controller. So it makes you wonder if the baseline Xbox has a place in the future in a couple years, especially if Windows keeps getting better and more game-like. I mean, we're already getting streaming built in with this update as well, where you can hit a button and you can just start streaming without having to mess around with OBS settings or anything like that. So it's it's interesting to see where Microsoft is going. I think they would much rather sell their operating system to people as software rather than have to build an entire system 
go through that entire, entire super labor-filled process, costly process too, just design operating systems and send them out, send games out that way, because they'll still license games if companies want to make these games for people. So I think Microsoft sees where their future is. I think it's going to be more software-based instead of this Xbox. I mean, the Xbox will be around for a while, but eventually we're going to get to a point where we're not really sure what the difference is between an Xbox and a PC since the exclusives are probably going to end up on both. And the last bit of news is technically Switch-related. So we also have a VR leak, I guess, or rumor from Obi-Wan. If you want to check out more of that, I did a video yesterday about the uh, ramifications of VR and how Nintendo can really put a stranglehold on the division by using VR to their advantage. But what I really want to talk about right now is Obi-Wan basically put a tweet out. I wish I had screenshotted it. I heard about it. I saw it. I was not at home, so I could not do it. Um, I was at work, saw the Twitter post come up, and I was like, oh, cool. Well, he basically came out and said that Laura Kate Dale has essentially legitimized all of his leaks, said that she completely backs them and confirms all of them. They're all legit. Well, what appears to be in a chat with her, you could see... That she says that's not true. And then he pulls down his tweet, which kind of begs the question as to what is going on right now, not between them, but with him. Like, what's going on with Obi Wan here? Was he, I have to imagine he kind of put that out to build more hype. I'm not sure. This definitely hurts to me, his legitimacy with this. Uh, I assume she's going to keep an eye on his leaks because now her name is kind of out there attached to him. So if he starts getting a little, if he gets like wrong with these leaks, we'll just say that if he, if he starts becoming kind of out there with his leaks and they're hard to believe and they don't end up being true, it's going to, it's going to hurt, I think her more than his channel now, because his channel will survive. Obviously he has 35,000 subs. It'll go on time. will go on with that. But this is kind of Laura Kate Dale's big thing right now was leaking switch stuff. She's become very popular because of it. And if all of a sudden these leaks start being untrue and her name is attached to it because he put her name attached. He made her name become attached to it by saying she is legitimate. Like they're legit now when they're not, it, it that's not good. And, and so she, she made it a little like kind of apparent here that uh, that's not true. I've not made said that all of her, le- his leaks are legit. So keep an eye on that guys. That's not a good thing. Like I said, it's very odd. So especially when the tweet actually gets pulled, that's a little telling. Maybe he jumped the gun, Again, trying to build hype, trying to get people excited. I know he does that on his channel. But yes, keep an eye on it. I just wanted to bring this up just so we can be more wary about rumors. Don't believe every single rumor that you hear. We've talked about this excessively here on this channel, but I just wanted to put that out there, guys. Think about things when you hear them. Don't just go post and jump to things right away. That's going to do it for Newswave today, guys. I hope you have a good weekend. Get out, have some fun, and I will see you guys Monday for Newswave. You'll see me over the weekend doing some other fun stuff, and uh, I think we'll have some fun. Definitely check me out tomorrow, guys. I will see you then.